We have a tropical heat wave here in Ireland. It is 27 degrees Celsius, which is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And heat makes me always think about fruity cakes, fruit cakes. This sounds politically incorrect. I'm gonna make a cherry tart today. on how to make a tart crust. So I'm going to start rolling it out now and I'm going to fill it into my tart form so I can start to make the filling for my cherry tart. So I'm going to put it now in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius and pre-bake the tart crust for about 10 to 15 minutes. You see it when it starts to get a little bit of a golden crust, that's the right time to take the tart crust out. And if you like to learn more about gluten-free baked deliciousness, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I have a book out. It is on Kindle Unlimited and it's called Gluten-Free Sugar Gasm. And as I promised last week, I'm gonna make today a cherry tart filling. But I'm gonna make an Italian cherry tart filling. What that means is, instead of cream, what a French pastry would use, I'm gonna use butter, sugar and almonds. I have been toying with the idea to make it vegan and substitute the eggs with a vegan egg. I'm not quite sure though if the custard will be quite as delicious. So this time I'm going to use eggs for it. And I think in one of the upcoming episodes, I'm going to play with how to make a good vegan custard, which I could use then for a creme brulee or any other kind of custard filling. So back to the cherry filling though. I'm going to start weighing certainly my 175 grams of butter. I'm going to measure 175 grams of sugar, 75 grams of almond, and I'm going to combine all of the ingredients now in my food processor. I'm going to add now two eggs. I'm going to blend the mixture and some of the dough got stuck to the edges of the food processor. So I'm going to loosen that up with my spatula and I'm going to blend it one more time. And here's the filling. In case you don't have a food processor and can't grind your own almonds, you can probably also substitute 175 grams of almond with almond flour, which is pretty pre-ground already, and then you can just mix it with the butter and the eggs with a regular handheld mixer. I'm gonna start preparing now my cherries for my Italian cherry tart. First, I'm gonna to have to distem my cherries. And after that, I have to depit the cherries. And as usual, I have a few gadgets for that. Like this scary looking machine. But if you make a lot of cherry tarts or cherry cakes, it's pretty handy to have. Okay, so you're gonna put the cherries in this contraption. Kind of really big cherries, by the way. You press with your hands down. And you can see how the pits are now in the container below. And then I'm going to repeat that until all of my cherries are depitted. Thinking of cherries, I need to make a cherry pie soon. I'm using about 400 grams of cherries. So here's my finished tart crust and I'm going to lay out now my cherries. And I'm going to keep a little bit of distance between them. And to finish off the cake, I'm going to put the filling now on the top of the cherries. And I'm not too worried that the filling is not evenly spread because the heat in the oven will make sure that the butter melts and will cover all the cherries evenly. The power of gravity. I'm gonna bake now the filling at a tart for an hour and 15 minutes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, 170 degrees until it becomes golden brown. So let's pop it in the oven. So here's my finished cherry tart and the last thing I want to do is sprinkle some powdered sugar on the top of it just to make it look a little bit prettier. Before I'm going to add the powdered sugar, I want to make sure that the cake has cooled down and reached room temperature. I'm also going to release the tart now from the form. To pop a tart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press 
with my finger against the rim of the form and push with my other fingers the bottom of the tart form up. That normally releases the tart. And here's the tart. The last thing I want to do is release the tart bottom by releasing the cake bottom with a cake spatula. And now I can just push the tart off the form. And here's the finished tart. I normally let the tart rest for a few more hours or I may even pop it in the fridge for the butter to solidify a little bit more before I'm gonna cut myself a slice. I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.